this will be the deck of this game, like, 100% without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, Prism Burst is a good concept, in theory. But there's just so many issues behind it. What I will say, though, is it's better than uh, Evolution School. This rush scenario is better than Evolution School, which goes to show how bad PvP is in this game. I mean, to put it into perspective, Rosetta has gone up 10 points tonight out of 100... No, out of 56 deviations. Out of 56 Prism deviations, Rosetta's only done 10 tonight. That is how severely imbalanced the servers are. And they've only gone up 100 points in the last week, I think, or three days. They've only gone up three in the last three days, right? 100 in the last three days, I think. So 11 deviations in the past three days. It's not that this is boring to me. It's that there's such a flawed system here. There would be more PvP if this wasn't so one-sided. If I could switch factions to Rosetta right now, I would. If I could go Rosetta right now and help them and get more PvP in doing so, I would. Like, I mean, this is just not fun at all. It was fun for the first week. Week 1 Prism Burst was so fun. There was so much open world PvP, even through the lag. But now, Phase 2, and I can imagine Phase 3 is just going to be dead. Like, let's just run around in the GVG zone and try and find another player. Let's see how long it takes to find another player. The premise of Prism Burst sounded so good too. Giant faction wars. You know what would have made this more fun? Get rid of the safe zones. Abolish the safe zones. Get rid of them. Fuck the safe zones. Make everyone have their base rateable. Get rid of the safe zones entirely. Like, as a streamer, I could get fucking stream snipe base rated. I don't care. I don't care. Get rid of the safe zones. Just get rid of the safe zones entirely. That would already make the scenario way better. What's the current exploits if they fix them out? Agree. That's just another part of the issue, right? If they didn't have the exploits, like getting into people's bases, if uh, there was no lag, if there was no safe zones, it would be a fun scenario. If you could have a one-time faction swap, those four things would make this scenario fun. But what I would have done, right, is I would have made it so the whole concept of Preservers was controlling points of interest. Instead of the securing bullshit that can be exploited, as a game designer myself, like I, I'm a game dev, I'm an indie game dev, I would have made it so as a faction you can control POIs. And since there's so many POIs, it would spread the players out and reduce lag. And at that, you could have fun in all the unique POIs in different combat environments. For example, imagine being the faction that owns Blackfell. How fucking sick would that be? Having constant urban fights in fucking Blackfell. Literally, it'll just be New World with like mini territories that anyone could participate in. Gonna be if you are signed up for PvP just to get PvP specific deviations. I haven't shot a single bullet toward a player. Think if you ever have dudes like me. Oh, 100%. And I mean, that's that's the other problem, right? Is the way they have this desync between scenarios releasing is it causes people to be pressured into playing something they don't want to play. For example, the next PvP scenario isn't coming until November, so I have to play the PvE scenario till November. For example, if you're a PvE player, you're encouraged to join a PvP server that you might not want to participate in until the, the wave winter. Like, at every time a new scenario drops, there should be a PvP version and a PvE version so it doesn't have this desync. At least have a very little safe zone. I think safe zones around the silos and monoliths is what I would do. I would have loved it to be more like what um, DOC did. Travel so you can take at any time. Yeah, sort of like uh, domination. Like a world... Like capture the flag or something, right? Like domination at a large scale across a big map. 100%. That would have been sick. In fact, they even briefly... We had that until the bases started getting banned. Like, it, I kind of hated it, but it's some... Like... It probably happened on most servers, but people would build around the teleporters, right? And at first I was kind of like, you know, it's kind of scummy building around the teleporters. But then it also created this concept of where there was these faction battles on who could control the teleporter. And it was like, that sort of became a control point in a ways. And there was always guaranteed PvP there. But now the players that build around TPs just keep getting banned, which is weird. When the devs can't just make it a no-build zone. It's a horror-based game, right? But sadly, I don't get the horror factor. I think the horror factor is really good in Dayton Wetlands. This area down here has the perfect vibe. Even where I am right now, the sort of murky, uh, grey area. I love this vibe. It's great. 
But when you go north into the sand area, that sort of just drops off, right? That vibe is kind of gone. Personally, I don't mind that too much. Uh, that's not really something I care about. But I can see what you mean. Better people using the game me mechanics instead of fixing broken mechanics. Yeah. They just ban people instead of fixing it. Like, for example, you can still build your base on top of a mountain, but apparently it's TOS. Like, why don't they just make the mountains unbuildable? Like, it's so dumb. Playing a potentially good game with an insane lag is a complete nightmare. There's your horror. Yep. We still haven't come across a single player, by the way. Not even a friendly player. In my opinion, the seasonal structure does not work. I'm going to be blunt. Their seasonal refresh structure does not work. They need to pivot into just a long-term MMO progression system. This isn't a long-term thing they're doing. Because every time they release a new scenario, they leave the old one behind and they keep introducing new bugs, new bugs, new bugs. They never give themselves enough time to fix shit. That's going to be what kills the game. Oh look, Wave Winter releases in a week. Boom, more bugs. Oh, another scenario releases in November, two weeks later. Boom, more bugs. They're never giving themselves time to fix shit, and that's going to kill the game. Not to mention... Actually, this is the most funny thing, right? If you're a new player, level 1, starting on Prism Clash, and I hate to say this, you're going to get fucking shit on by veterans. Because, as the devs said, hey, we create these seasonal refreshes to make it fair for new players. That is a fucking lie, right? You want to know why that's a lie? Things like this. Six-star bingo legendary mods that they don't have instantly make it unfair for that new player so what is the entire point of the seasonal refresh in the first place what the fuck is the point what is the point when we instantly have a whole arm set of life force hp boost compared to a new player what's the point seasons is this to try and keep the players on the game seasons yes but reset seasons no Reset seasons are gonna cost this game. Seasonal reset content should just be, uh, contest re Yeah, they should just release new content and expand on the map. Like, for example, when Way of Winter releases... This is actually another point, right? When Way of Winter releases, why not just unlock the Northern Zones on the current season and just have it permanently go on and on like a normal MMO? Like, oh cool, new, new map extension comes out, awesome, we still get the old content to experience. Because what makes the least sense to me is deleting the old content. When all of the minibus and evolution scena cool scenarios are complete, this part of the map becomes unplayable. That's a waste of fucking content. Like, why? If I was the developer behind this section of the map, and in a few weeks people don't get to play that, I would be fucking pissed, bro. Like, bro. Like, we made this entire map and now people don't get to play it anymore. Like, bro, it's so dumb. We still haven't come across a player, by the way. Maybe a little like Diablo, you can- Yes, exactly like Diablo. You can have a permanent scenario and a seasonal scenario. And once the seasonal scenario is complete, you can bring your character into the permanent scenario. 100% like that. That's how it should be. That's exactly how it should be. They should at least wait three months to make a whole new map, like a whole new season, new contents, new blueprints. Um, exactly, exactly. Exactly, like... I don't know. I just think them, like, progressively adding new seasons and effectively deleting old content is so dumb so fucking dumb like the fact this entire map they put effort into creating is going to effectively be deleted in a month is so fucking dumb our servers mayflies are struggling with like uh with with their 500 sacrums we now get 9,000 points i get 500 that's the other thing this prison verse scenario gives you fucking zero starcrum dude you get fucking nothing from this like even being on the winning faction what you get like 3,000 starcrum maybe I think it's like 3,000, maybe 4, okay, it might be 4,000 Starcrom. And if you're on the losing faction, you'll never get this. That's even worse, like, it's so... Fucked. <laughs> oh, let's bring, actually, let's just keep ranting, why not? Let's, let's make this a rant stream. These fucking boxes right here, Legacy of Conflict. This is what you get for being a winner and a loser in the faction scenario. I think you get like, you get like 7 of these, I believe. For completing and winning the faction scenario do you want to know what i got out of opening one of these a fucking molotov i got a fucking molotov yeah who else got a molotov yep yep hell yeah didn't hell yeah didn't we played this whole 19 day scenario to get a fucking molotov brother 
Brother. I think it's only me at Dig to Hell. This is so fucking depressing. I'm the only player at Dig to Hell. What's the time in Europe? Is it morning? Uh, one of the players? It's peak time on my server right now. I'm in Southeast Asia. It's peak time. It is about almost 9 p.m. SGT. And I'm on one of the day one prism servers too. Which we could see how many players online for the world. Yep. 100%. I think you should also be able to freely hop between worlds. Phase 2. Yep. This is phase 2. Halfway through. Oh no. We're almost in phase 3. Phase 3 tomorrow I think. But what's the point when no one's going to be playing? We basically gathered all our factions PvP as last night. Trying to defend a Rex. And we used so much mats to try and defend. We lost eventually last 10 minutes because of lags and door hacks. Being uh, super outnumbered. So I was like fuck it. No more PvP. I'm done. That's fair. We got phase 2 today. I'm uh, SC Asia PvP X01. Server is dead. Oh, you guys server is dead too. I was going to be on that server too. By the way, this is what you get for helping in an event. These are the rewards you get for helping in an event. Six mob parts. No fucking way. That's insane. Holy dude. What loot. Insane loot, dude. What the dudes should have done is they should have made it so you get, um, like, individual prison points if you're in a hive. Number one, it should be hive base. Number two, you should be able to get points at a very low rate for helping other faction members that aren't in your hive. Also, there should be a leaderboard for kills. There should be leaderboard rewards for kills and shit. Uh, exclamation mark bullseye. Um, you saw. But there should be a fucking kill leaderboard too. This is the very least they should have done. This is the very least they should have done. Where is it? Sproutlet for getting kills in open world. This is the very least they should have done. You get something for actually killing people. I.e. Sproutlet. But they didn't even think about that. Like, it's so stupid. It doesn't leave my base. In I mean, yeah, I don't... E I'm a PvP sweat. And I just leave my base in the safe zone. Because why would I put it in a contest area? I don't need to. When I want to secure a Deviant, I just use my friend's siege base. I don't need to use my own base. What's the point of having my base in a, a PvP zone when I don't need to? There's no incentive. There's <laughs> no point. Uh, my faction and all the defense, which we've had like 80% of it, got nothing, not even leadable points. Yeah. That's scuffed. That is very scuffed. I'll support in Primal and PvE, always giving red plasmas and defending Resonant. It sounds like there's a lot more teamwork and fun shit to do in Prime Wars. I'm kind of sad that I missed out on that scenario, to be honest. I mean, I think we're going to be surprised at how many bugs there are in the win way of winter scenario. Like, I think it could be fun, but I would be very wary on the amount of bugs they introduce in this way of winter scenario. Because I've had no playtest. To think, think of it this way. Manibus and Evolution School have been in development since 2022 and have had three closed beta tests that all lasted multiple months. And there's still bugs on that scenario. We're going to Way of Winter, which has had no playtests, no CBTs. I'm fucking concerned at how many bugs there are going to be in that scenario. If there's this many bugs in the current scenarios that have been playtested for two fucking years, what are we about to jump into? I think we're expecting too much from the winter update. I feel like it's going to be a very minimal upgrade from what we got. I think so too. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I'm very concerned with the future of this game. This game will die um, after Arc 2 is released or even before that. I mean, I'm probably going to be going back to New World, so... I'm still obviously going to be playing this game a shitload. If it does pull through. But, I mean, most likely cases New World brings me back in. My abusive ex. Desfix the Primal after two loot crates. JK? Nah, that's true though. That's true. A fellow um, who's playing on test server just sent me negative feedbacks every day. Oh, you have a friend that's on the Way of Winter test server? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. You can build when you're being attacked, Jupiter. You can. That's what I've run into multiple times when I've been raiding. People can tweak their base life. The only thing you can't do when you're being attacked is move it. But you can tweak your base as much as you like when you're being attacked. That's a complete oversight on the devs too. Yeah, I think the, the big problem with this game is they don't have a, a identity. The devs in this game have an identity crisis. In fact, I can even show this stuff. So, basically, way back when, around about, I think, a uh, year or two ago, the PvP scenario had a completely different 
um, system and mechanics. Um, effectively, there was going to be an extraction-like PvP zone, very similar to the Division, where or the Division's Dark Zone, I think it was, where you would go in, get loot, and extract, and they completely scrapped that. Then come CBT-1, it was full-on unrestricted PvP, where if you held down P and you went into PvP mode, you could shoot anyone and they would be flagged for PvP. And then CBT-2, they introduced the war mechanic and PvP servers. Uh, same with the Echo Stones, I believe, got added in CBT-2. Um, and then comes CBT-3, they made it so you can't attack other players on PvP servers unless they're also flagged. Which eliminated the whole purpose. Uh, and then come live is same as CBT3 basically. They, this game has a massive identity crisis. They tried to cater to PvP and PvE simultaneously. Yep. What I would have done is I would have just had a one server for all. I wouldn't have tried to divide the player base. And what I would have simply made it so there's a PvP matchmaking game mode. That's all you need to do. Do the PvE service and then have a PvP matchmaking game mode that the PvP players can play. Boom, easy, problem solved. So dev just went from Tarkov to COD to random BS. Yep, that's exactly what happened. The devs have no idea what the fuck they're doing. And you know what's the most saddening thing to hear? In the recent dev Q&A that we had as the creators with the, um, the developers, they said they're against the idea of doing a PvP game mode. That fucking crushes any chance of this game, in my opinion, for PvP. They said they don't want to do PvP game modes. That's a GG for PvP in my books. It's like they want to fucking kill their game. Do they want to sell light forge crates or not? Like, hello? They can't hide it. There are more PvE players and you know, they have no choice to cater to them. See, the thing is, I'm more than happy for that. Um, didn't they say they were, PvP? They were originally PvP focused? And CBT2, um, they were. CBT1, CBT2, they were. And then CBT3, they basically said, hey, PvE. Which I have no problems with. But if you're going to create PvP, at least create something fun. Not some fucking exploitable shit like this. But all we needed was like Team Deathmatch 5v5. Do the PvE scenarios only with a queuable 5v5 Team Deathmatch. Easy, problem solved. Everyone's happy. Now, I don't make this video as a way to bash the game. In fact, I fucking love this game and it's got fantastic bones. We just need the meat and the flesh on that bone to make it a good game. I have 700 hours, almost 750 hours on this game, and I absolutely love it, but it has got a serious amount of problems that need to be fixed. If they release more Lightforge crates without fixing their game, they might as well consider that as a big spit in the face to its current player base, and I would quit the game if they did that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.